Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. Oh, check this out. The chessboard, the Fanuc robot, the shunk grippers, all the technology coming together for your benefit. Today, I'm proud to say that I didn't actually lose from this robot. So you wanna see a secret right now? Check this out. Boom! <laughs> so that's my oldest son, Tyson. You know him from doing all the tutorials for the Rocket series and, and all the high-end lathe CNC machining on our platforms. And now he's programming this robot. And he actually programmed the robot to beat his death. And I don't like to lose at anything, right? I don't want to lose from a robot. I definitely don't want to lose from my son. But that's a little bit, I can, I can handle that a little bit. But the robot, no. So in this video, we're gonna break it all down and we're gonna teach you exactly, step by step, how Tyson actually programmed this robot to do the checkmate move. Tyson, it is all you. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to program this robot to make a chess move. Not only that, the exact move that I used to beat my dad in two turns. Before we get started, I'd just like to say that this robot here is just like any other machine that we have in the shop. You need somebody to program it, and it'll do exactly what you tell it to do. Today I'm here to show you how easy it is to program a simple move like this. Let's start by going through all the steps, starting with step number one, how to turn on the machine. So we fired up the machine. I've got this guy here, which is the teach pendant, and this is basically the handheld controller for this robot. With the teach pendant, I can do everything from jogging the robot to programming it, to even controlling things like this claw here. This is the first screen that shows up when you start up the robot. So let me give you a quick rundown on the panel. The top screen is a touch screen. I have it set for two different windows, so I can have my program on one screen and I can have things like my position of my robot or the controls for the claw up in the other. You have these F keys, which all correspond to these things here. These will change depending on which window you're in. Anything in blue here, means that you need to hold down the shift key in order to run it. If it's in blue and white, that means it has an extra function when you hold down the shift key. So all of these buttons on the side here, these are all to jog the robot. You have them listed by axis, and you also have them each with their own joint number, joint one, two, three, four, and so on. So in order to jog the robot, you need to hold down the shift key and push one of the joint buttons and keep it held down. It kind of acts as a safety so that you need to constantly hold that down. That's only when you're programming the robot or when you're in teach mode, which I'll go over. Two other important things to know. On the back, you have these things here, which are called dead man switches. You can push them in one time is very easy. And then the second time you kind of have to push in. When you're using the teach panel and you're in teach mode, you need to constantly have this pushed in to that first click in order to do anything with the teach panel. That's another safety feature that's on this robot. The second click, when you push it all the way in, that acts as an emergency stop. The other important thing, at the top here, you have an on and off switch here. That's to tell it if you're in teach mode or if you're in auto mode. When your robot's all programmed and you're ready to run through your program, you need to switch it from teach mode to auto mode. And from auto mode, you can no longer use the teach panel. You have to start using the buttons on the robot controller. You can see the robot also has an auto mode setting and it has one that says T1, which is basically it's in teach mode here. So when we're ready to start running the robot, we're gonna switch that to auto mode. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new program. So I've got these teach buttons here. I'm gonna hit select to bring me to my program menu. From here, I'm gonna hit create. And we're gonna create a new program. And now I'm going to enter a program name. So I'm just going to call this chess2. Now we have a blank program. Let's start off by giving our robot our first move. So I'm going to start by giving it kind of a home position for the robot, its starting point. Push on my dead man switch. I'm going to hit reset because whenever I let go of the dead man switch, it gives out an alarm. I'm going to hold down shift and then I'm going to select which robot joints I want to jog. You can see it starts off a little bit slow. I have my rapid when I first turn on the machine is set to 10%. So you have these percentage buttons at the bottom of the panel. 
which will increase the rapid on the robot. If I hold down shift and hit one of those, it skips the percentage, so it goes up to 50% and then 100%. Get the robot in kind of a nice starting position. Once I've got my robot into a position I like, and I want that to be my first move, I've got these icons here at the bottom of the screen. You have point and you have touch up. So the one I want first is a point. It brings up these options here, which is what kind of motion I want this point to be. So you have fine motions and you have continuous motions. The fine motions will stop every time it hits that position. It'll slow down and stop. And the continuous motions will constantly move to make one fluid motion. For this tutorial, we're just gonna use fine motions. I'm gonna hit 100% fine and hit enter. And you can see in my program, it recorded that move there. Cool, we got our point. Let's go to the next step. I'm gonna move this robot in front of the piece that I wanna grab. So I'm gonna rotate in the direction that I wanna go. The piece that we're gonna be grabbing is the queen on the board. I'm just gonna move the joints until I find a point that I'm happy with. Once I start getting close to the board, I'm gonna drop my rapid down. We're gonna jog it into position to where it's close to a piece that I wanna grab, but it's not quite all the way there. The reason is this robot's gonna go straight from the first point that I selected. It's gonna move straight to the second point, moving all its joints to get to its position. I don't wanna go straight into the piece that it's gonna be grabbing because then it might knock over the piece or it might hit the board. I'm gonna stop just a little bit away from what piece I want. In fact, just to be extra safe, I'm gonna back off joint two and we're gonna make one more move where it's gonna to go to this position first and I'm gonna record that point. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit 100% fine after selecting point and we recorded another point. Now from there, I'm gonna go up joint two to where I was before. Once I'm happy with that, we're gonna add another point. Now here, I'm gonna get my claw around where I'm gonna be grabbing on the piece. So I'm gonna grab the top portion of the queen. Let's drop my rapid down all the way to 10%. And I'm gonna be moving joint two and three until I reach about center of the piece. And then I'm also gonna rotate joint six just a hair because it looks like I could be centered a little bit better. So if I'm happy with that, then I'm gonna add that point. So now I'm ready to tell the claw to start gripping. I'm gonna actually grip the piece and then jog my robot with the piece attached to it so that I can make sure that when it's grabbing that piece, there's no problems with it moving it. I'm gonna hit menu we're gonna go down to the fifth option here, which is IO. And then I'm gonna go down to robot. These are basically switches on the robot. And for two of them, the gripper is wired to it. So the last two here, seven and eight, these are my claw controls. If I turn on seven, the gripper will close. If I turn that off and I give eight an on signal instead, the gripper will open. So one switch has to go off and the other switch has to turn on in order for the gripper to open and close. I'm gonna give these same commands to my program so it'll do it automatically, but because I want to jog the robot with the piece attached, we're gonna use the gripper right now. So I'm gonna hit on on seven, and that closed the gripper just now. So now if I lift joint three up in positive, you can see it lifts up the piece. We're not gonna record that move just yet, but let's go ahead and give my program those commands. And now on these icons, I'm gonna hit this arrow over here. You can see these are all the different kinds of instructions that you can give your robot. The one that we're gonna be going over today, we're gonna to be using the I and O instruction. And now we have all these different statements we can give for this instruction. So we're gonna select RO, which is robot out. Now it's asking me to give a value for this R and O instruction. So I'm gonna tell it which switch first that I wanna turn off. So I'm gonna change that to eight, and then it's asking for an IO statement. So we're gonna turn that switch off. Now we're gonna add another instruction, INO, RO. Now we're gonna turn switch seven. So enter seven, we're gonna turn that on. So when it reaches that position, it'll turn off switch eight, turn on switch seven, and then the gripper will close. 
One final thing before I make my next jog movement. After the gripper does its thing, I like to give it a little weight so that it has a second to actually grip the part before it starts moving because this happens almost instantly. So we're gonna give it another instruction and this time we're gonna select wait. You have all kinds of different statements here. We're just gonna go with seconds. So wait seconds and let's just say two seconds. That's what I did on the actual program. So after it does that grip, it's gonna wait two seconds before it does the next move. So now that we're holding our piece, we're gonna lift it up. We can't just go straight to the section on the board that we wanna go. Otherwise it's just gonna knock all these pieces around. We have to lift the piece up first and get it up out of the way. And then we move it to around where we wanna go and then we're gonna set it down. I lifted it up just now to show you the gripper and how that works, but I didn't record that point yet. So I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit further before I record that point. And get it to a position I like. And then I'm gonna make sure my program window's active. Go down to the bottom. And we're gonna record that point right there. The robot's gonna pick up the piece and go to that position. Now that I'm not right up against other pieces, I'm gonna turn my rapid up. Let's move joint two. I'm gonna move joint one. Joint three just a little bit. We're gonna find a good position that I wanna move this piece in. So you can see I'm moving multiple axes, playing with different joints. I've got joint two here, joint three here. Just trying to find a position that I like close to that space that I want to move to. So this space right there. Once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna click on point. I'm gonna add that in. So now we're gonna move it down so that it hits the space that I want. But I'm gonna find a good angle to bring the robot. So I'm gonna bring my robot right above the square that I want to use. I'm gonna go down to the end of my program and I'm gonna hit point and we're gonna record another fine move. So now I'm gonna turn my rapid all the way down and we're just gonna fine tune this. I'm bringing down joint five to where it's just barely touching the table. So let's get the queen down so that when I let go of the gripper and it unclamps, it's gonna release the queen and it'll land on the space. So I'm gonna drop my rapid all the way down and then we're gonna bring down joint three and move in joint two. And I'm just gonna go until I'm barely touching the table. So get it to where I like it. We're gonna record the point. So I'm gonna go down to switch seven. I'm gonna turn that off. And then I'm gonna hit switch eight and I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna give those commands in my program now. So we're gonna go down to instruction, IO, then we're gonna to go to RO. And this time I'm gonna turn switch seven off. So switch seven, turn off, and then we'll go do the same thing to switch eight, but that one we're gonna turn on. And then once again, we're gonna wait two seconds, just like when we gripped onto the piece. So just think of all the different kinds of things you could have this robot do using a similar kind of motion. You can have it pick up all kinds of pieces, load pieces into a lathe. The possibilities are almost endless. Once I'm happy with where it's at, we're gonna move the robot out of the way now. So I'm gonna pick up joint three, pick up my rapid, joint three positive. Let's just get it out of the way somewhere there. We're gonna record that point. And now we're gonna bring joint two all the way back. We're gonna go joint one. Kind of move all the joints slightly. So I'm gonna get it to this position here at another point. The last move I'm gonna do is we're gonna bring it back to that first position I had. So now I'm just gonna add another point, the same point where I'm at. It shows up as point 11, but I'm gonna change that point right now and I'm gonna give it a value, and we're gonna say point number one. So from this point here, it's just gonna go back to the very first position that I had it at. If I hold shift and press forward, you can see it's gonna go back. 
and it moves to our starting position. We're gonna run through it real quick. So I'm gonna move my piece back. And we're just gonna step through or single block through the program. And I'm gonna hold down the shift key and we're gonna push forward. So it goes to line two. And then it goes to line three. And you can see it's just gonna go through all the motions now. So every time I push forward, because it's on step mode, it stops. This panel also buzzes every time that it stops to let me know that it's ready for the next command. Essentially right now, I'm proving my program out. Like I mentioned before, it's like a single block on a machine, going through line by line on a CNC, making sure your program's good. It's going through, it went through our wait command, it's picking up the piece. Going forward, bringing it down, close, setting it down. It's waiting. <laughs> Comes back up. and then goes into position. You probably saw that nudge when it lifted up from this point here, it moved the piece just a hair. It's really easy to fix up points if you don't like a line or you wanna change it to a different position. So all you have to do is from the position that you wanna change. This is probably because I moved joint two a little bit too much in one direction, because like I said, when it moves to another position, it moves it all at once, so it, touch the piece just a little bit. So I'm gonna shift up from here. This is that position from at right after it lets go. This is point number nine on my program. I'm just gonna move joint three up. From this position, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the line that I wanna change. So point number nine. I have touch up here on the screen. So I can actually touch up that position and change it to where I'm at currently. So if I click on touch up, it says press shift key to record. We're gonna hold down the shift key and hit touch up. And then it says point has been recorded to point nine. You can also see there's an at sign on my program. That means the position of the robot is at that point. It's very sensitive to collisions and impacts. If a piece is moving too much, it might alarm out because of it. So it's very easy to program and catch mistakes with this robot. So from our new point, I'm just gonna continue our program. And you can see now it has no problem. And gets back to our home position. So with that, I think we're ready to run the actual program now. I'm gonna turn my teach pad from on to off. And then on the controller, I'm gonna change it from teach mode to auto mode. After we set it to auto mode, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of step mode, so that's gone. And then I'm gonna clear any faults because I let go of the dead man switch and I switched it to auto mode. I'm gonna hit reset and now auto mode is ready. So now all that's left is to hit the green button and we're ready to go. So the program looked good. One final thing I wanna show you, because this is a collaborative robot, if I was to touch it right now, it would stop. And that's to prevent any injuries. It also doesn't go very fast. What you saw in the video with my dad was full speed. So it's not gonna hurt if this thing hits you. It's just gonna stop instantly. And then you can reset your program and pick up from where you left off. So it's very safe for teaching environments. You can see it's not very difficult. You just record each point to every position you want this robot to go to and it'll do that. This is just a basic program. There's so much more you can do with this robot. We just kind of dipped our toes into the world of robotics here. So we're gonna have much more robotics content coming in the near future. So stay tuned to our channel and we'll see you next time.